Hello, Laney community. How are you? Can I say, thank God it's Friday. <laughs> and that's the best day to have a celebration on. My name is Mildred Lewis, and I'm the Dean of Enrollment Services. And I have the distinct honor of being the director of the EOPS Care Next Up CalWORKs program. So welcome. Um, I'm happy to welcome our administrators, faculty, staff, student workers, honored guests, and most especially, the Laney College EOPS CARE Next Up in CalWORKS graduates to our annual awards luncheon. Give yourselves a round of applause. I have a quote from Buddha, and it says simply, we are shaped by our thoughts. So that today, you are, you are here being honored for completing your academic goals, first and foremost, because you believed you could. And we stand in celebration with you and honor your completion. Congratulations. I'd like to uh, uh, welcome up Vicki Ferguson, our Vice President of Student Services. Please join me in welcoming Vicki. Hello, everyone. Good. Afternoon, good afternoon. You look absolutely fabulous. You look fabulous and it's a joyous occasion and I'm here to do the recognition. Um, and our most important guests are our, who? Graduate. Our graduates, right? So let's give it up for our students. But there's also another other important guest that we have here. They're the ones that supported you. They're the ones that cheered for you and said, you can do it. Just hang in there. They were your babysitters. They, were your, they took you to doctor's appointments, or they dropped you off for class, or gave you money for the bus, or BART. And who are they? Family. family. Let's give it up for our family. Thank you so much for being here and for supporting our students. How's the lunch going? It's delicious. So catering staff, please wave your hand in the back. Thank you so much for feeding us a joyous meal because it makes me want to go take a nap. But it is that good. So thank you. Also, I can't thank enough our leadership under Dean Lewis as well as our fabulous EOPS Care Next Up and CalWORK staff who will be receiving additional um, recognition later on. But thank you, it's a beautiful day, and what a beautiful day to celebrate our student graduates. Thank you. And next up is our wonderful president, Dr. Tamil Glickerson. <laughs> You're welcome. I'm a little taller than her, though. See? We're coming in gradations of height, right? We should stand next to each other. Well, good afternoon. I am so thrilled to be here and to be celebrating these amazing accomplishments of you, our students. It gives me incredible joy. Um, and this is really a remarkable event. And I think uh, as a VP Ferguson said, you know, I really want to take a moment to acknowledge um, just the team of people that it takes to sort of do these things. I wore my shirt, you see? Strong as a mother. What? So I want to just thank all those because in a lot of ways, right, what we have here is folks who've been mothering and supporting and nurturing and doing the things that help us remember, you know, how we find the joy. So uh, Dr. Lewis and I had this conversation yesterday. We were hanging out. Whoever who has time to hang out, but we actually got a moment to be together. And of course, she did a Buddha quote, but I was like, let me, let me reflect on some Rumi for her. And this quote sort of, it's kind of a gift that I want to just remind you all, is that when you do things from your soul, when you do things from your soul, you feel a river moving in you, a joy. And I want to say that I think that the faculty, classified professionals, the support team, 
the folks who are running the programs that are serving, right? The EOPS, CARE, Next Up, and CalWORKs programs, our partnership with folks from B2B, I see in you each this, that you are serving from your soul and that what brings it out, some days it's hard, but there is a joy and the joy is this moment, y'all. The joy is what you all have doing and the accomplishments you made despite whatever's going on. And so I wanna just take a second to acknowledge and thank this incredible team of folks that I feel very privileged to work alongside with. Um, and I wanna just acknowledge you all. So Feke Latte, I hope you can stand. Lynn Williams, My Lee, Bene Tyson, Ding Yao Wang, and Cynthia Alvarado. Can you please stand up? Let's, please, yeah, yes. I'm so grateful for each of you. Thank you so much for all you give and everything you're giving. It's soul work for sure. Thank you so much. And then I wanted to also um, acknowledge um, this incredible team of counselors that we have. And so I'm going to be asking them to stand up as well. Nina Trong, Laura Glantreras, Sandra McGee, Irina Rivkin, and Carolyn Cornelius. Please stand. The, the care you give, the advice, the dedication, the helping see the pathway, right? This is, this, is, this is the gift of it, is what you've done. And so I'm really grateful to you all for that work that you've done. Thank you so much. Uh, I also want to thank our student workers, right? We've got these amazing students that you all see. I see them when I go in the office. I see you all in the back. Come on out. All of our student workers are wearing our amazing I Am Powerful shirts. Um, some of them are outside, but uh, just the thanks, right? It takes a village, and the village is uh, far and wide. Um, we have some partners, our B2B partners as well, Faith and Shanina. Uh, thank you so much for all you do uh, for partnering with us and making sure that we have these strong connections with our community. And, you know, there's a lot of... Um, faculty and staff from other areas of the college who are here as well, and I would love for you to stand. We have folks from our library who are here. We have our incredible librarian, our library team. Um, and then uh, we have some of our college administration here as well. So we have uh, Dean Chuen Chan in the back, um, Rudy Besikoff, the vice president of instruction, again, our vice president of um, of Student Services who greeted you, Gary Aubrey, our Director of Student Activities and Campus Life who helps coordinate things, um, and then certainly Dr. Lewis. I'm very grateful to you for you know the work and the support uh, that you give uh, and the calm, right? And the sort of in the storm, you're often doing that. And there are, you never do these things without actually having right arm people. And so I would say, again, Cassandra Upshaw, um, just my gratitude to you for everything that you do on a daily basis. Um, and folks like Hope Lane, who support our Vice President of Student Services as well. So um, I, I'm gonna get off the stage because there's so much stuff happening here uh, and I could stay here forever. But I did wanna also just say one thing. We have some supporters who come who've been here as part of the legacy, and today is a little bit about legacy and the future of EOPS. And so I want to just actually uh, give a shout out to uh, Iris Brooks, the former dean, director, and advisory board mentor, um, and really a mentor to Dr. Lewis as well. So it's a pleasure to have you here, and I really appreciate you coming. And then Dr. Chavez, who you'll be hearing from later, who's been a strong supporter for many, many years. and. I think our most honored guest, though, is Ms. Tia, Lynn's mother, who comes every single year to the celebration. And so, um, again, we stand on the shoulders of those who come before us. So, um, and I also have, you know, there's a strong connection to what? Financial aid as well. And so our financial aid staff who are here, can you please give a wave? I see you all being shy. There you are. Thank you so much to our team in financial aid. So a lot of thank yous go in to me. So as I get to celebrate the great work and the great accomplishments of you, our students, I give gratitude and thanks to you, the team here at Laney College, for making this all and helping them see the joy. Thank you.
it's time for, for song and we will be doing a sing-along. I want to welcome up uh, Irina Rifkin and we have a wonderful lovely guitarist that's going to join as well. So let me explain what's going to happen. On your tables there's a song and it's called Nevertheless We Persist. And so our colleague Irina Rifkin loves to sing but this is going to be a sing-along where you all join in every year. And you know when you love doing something and it comes from the, from the bottom of your heart and from deep within your belly, you make that offer and we always say yes. And then we also join in. So I hope you feel the spirit. And the guitarist, what's your name? I'm Murphy. The guitarist is Murphy. Thank you so much. I wanted to mention this is Murphy Levitt who learned guitar at Laney College and is a music student at Laney College. And this song um, is called Nevertheless We Persist because all of you persist and are getting to your goals and you're going to keep on persisting no matter what happens. So I'm really inspired by that. Now usually when I uh, write a social justice song, when I bring it here, I kind of change the words, make them a little bit more neutral, but today the theme is the art of social justice, so I'm singing the song as it was originally written. I wrote it in 2017, and I'm hoping that you all will join in. There's a part that goes, goes, oh, let's try that together. Oh, cool. And there's another part that goes, Nevertheless, we persist, persist. Nevertheless, we resist, resist. Nevertheless, we persist, persist. Nevertheless, we resist, resist. Cool, you got it. Okay, so we're gonna start. One, two, three, four. Nevertheless, we 
So that was absolutely beautiful. Let me say this to you that I love about the consistency of Irina Rifkin, is when we do our retreats and you ask her a question about what she thinks about our students and she says it in her songs, and one of the most powerful words she says is resilient. Now, a lot of us say that, but she is consistent throughout the years in the presentation of her love to you through song, in addition to the counseling that she provides. So thank you. Okay, now we're in for a special treat, another one. Um, it's my great honor to introduce someone to you today that I've known for over a decade. Um, I'm happy to introduce today's keynote speaker. She's an incredible practitioner scholar, Dr. Lilia, Dr. Lilia Chavez. She's the Dean of Special Programs and Grants at Merritt College, improving access, persistence, retention, and completion of our students. I met Dr. Chavez, Chavez more than a decade ago in, in the Laney College EOPS program. I was the care coordinator at the time, and she was an adjunct counselor. She is a consummate professional who earned her Doctor of Education degree from the University of San Francisco in international and multicultural education and wrote her dissertation on beyond Napatra. I'm a Napatra. I don't speak Spanish. I'll let you repeat that. Um, do you want to come on up now and say that before I, before I finish to do your dissertation respect? It's her dissertation. I'll let you say that in the mic and I'll continue. Beyond Nepantla. Thank you, that's beautiful. An exploration of factors that affect the academic success of Chicano students. As a scholar, Dr. Chavez collaborates with other scholars to publish art articles related to culturally sensitive and relevant pedagogy celebrating students' various ways of knowing and culture within higher education. She also presents at highly regarded conferences such as the AERA as a significant leader and contributor um, alongside other premier multicultural and Latinx pedagogues. For fun, Dr. Chavez is a member of the Mariachi Feminel Argula. If I'm saying it right, I'm. Can you work here, please? <laughs> Mariachi Feminil Orgullo Mexicano. Oh my God, doesn't that sound beautiful? <laughs> Uh, the first female mariachi band in, the, in uh, the Northern Bay Area. She is a loving daughter, sister, mother, grandmother, community member. I know, this is a grandmother. Oh, wow. Beautiful, right? Um, community member, colleague, and friend. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Chavez today. Good afternoon, everyone. I would like to start with a moment of silence for our ancestors. And I thank your ancestors for having you here. The fact that you are sitting at a table is an honor. Every time I think of people inviting me to speak, I always think, what do I have to say? There's so many amazing stories in the world. My ancestors' stories, your ancestors' stories, and a lot of times we forget. Today, the message was supposed to be about the art of social justice, but we have to remember the social justice that our ancestors left within our DNA and our hearts. So I would like to say thank you. I am humbled, I'm always grateful, and every time I think I'm gonna say no, Something in my spirit says, yes, you're supposed to stand up there. And when you're invited to the table, you are representing your grandmothers, your grandfathers, and everybody else that came before you. So I thank you today for them. I thank you to our elders that are here witnessing this celebration and acknowledgement for all our graduates. I would like to thank the creator for the gift of our lives and all this creation. Our families, our friends, the workers, the students. Our why is the students. 
They are our future leaders and caretakers. And those of you graduating, I am so, you don't know me, but I am so proud of you. And maybe one day you're gonna be my nurse. Maybe one day you're gonna be my banker. Maybe one day you're gonna be that person that gives me that glass of water that I need. And I'm truly, truly grateful for this moment. I'm honored to speak and share in this time. We are having some major challenges in society. We're even having major challenges in our jobs, in our homes, in our communities. The homelessness has increased tremendously. The uh, food security is another issue. And although we sit here and celebrate, I want you to leave here with a seed that we have to be conscientious. And our responsibility, we are all leaders and we all have a purpose. It does not matter how old we are. So my message today is about divine social justice. See, the art of social justice is when we look outside. So through um, looking at our own oppression through the lens sometimes of education is a way to understand social justice because we're bringing something different. In the dictionary, the definition of social, social justice, it says justice in terms of wealth opportunities and privileges within a society. And I thought to myself, well, that's telling me to look outside and help outside, but what about inside? What about your soul? What about your, your heart? What about your need? It continues to say, social justice is a concept of fair and just relations between the individual and society. Social justice assigns rights and duties to the institutions of society, which enables people to receive the basic needs and burdens of cooperation. EOPS has been around for over 50 years. We don't just cooperate, we change lives. There are different layers in social justice. Stop for a minute and ask yourself, where do you see injustice? Could somebody answer that question? It's everywhere. Everywhere. It, we cannot even go to church now. Our children, our teenagers, our women, our men, we have lost our moral compass. Education is one of the systems that we need to have social justice as laws change. When I think of social justice, I do think about EOPS. I'm a dean of EOPS. I've worked in EOPS. Never was a recipient of it, but I am so, it's not my money, and we need to help. The, state, the statewide mission for EOPS that the program's primary mission is to encourage the enrollment retention and transfer of students handicapped by language, social economic, and education, dis educational disadvantages, and to facilitate the successful completions of their goals. And I think today is a testament of all your hard work. And for those who came, those who came before us, because like we saw today, Mildred's mentor is here, amazing. Lynn's mother is here, amazing. We forget about those links. We forget about our elders and how important it is to have them here to witness and to know that you are continuing a legacy. And the legacy is something we have to do. Life is not perfect but we need to know that you are a contributor to make this society better. So what this means today is that EOPS impacted you through a system that was placed in your path with all the people that helped you succeed. Every person, no matter if you leave here thinking, oh, this person was good, I didn't like that 
back on, good, bad, or indifferent, you made it through. And you have a responsibility to make it happen for somebody else. When I did my doctoral research, I looked at factors that supported and impeded students. The title beyond Nepantla means Nepantla is a Nahuatl word. It's native. Why? Because I struggled. Because inside, here I am standing before you, and you look at me and say, oh, she's Latina. When I'm here in the United States, I feel like I'm American. They say, no, you're not American. I go to Mexico, they said, no, I'm Mexican. No, you're not Mexican. You're pocha, you're a, a gringa, you're from the US. Okay, well, I have indigenous roots. I go to the native circles. You're not native enough. You're not pure. We do this to each other. It's a psychological beat up. We become our own enemies. We become our own oppressors oppressors that impact our children, our grandchildren, and the lives of many. I implore you today that your goal and your task is to heal yourself. Your degree is a piece of paper that's saying you know something so you can get a job and help somebody else. But when you step into ceremony of everyday life and know that your life is a gift, that is where the power is. Because as time goes, we have to continue in ceremony. I remember my grandmother praying every night and I could not understand, will that lady get off her knees? So now I understand that as a grandmother, I need to get on my own knees to pray for my kids and my grandkids. This is an honor, an honor. And as I continue, in my doctoral studies, I realized that I was trying to find problems in my own thought process in the education system. And as I researched more, I realized, yeah, they're there. They're obvious. But then there are also things that we come with. We bring our own challenges. Sometimes it's within our own families, our own culture. So, I wasn't supposed to go to college. I am a re-entry student. My older brother said to me, you're, you're a mom, you need to stay home and take care of your kids. And I said, okay. I stopped telling him that I was going to school. <laughs> it took me 11 years to get my AA and I am a product of Peralta Colleges. And as I continue in my educational journey, I just invited my siblings to my graduations. And I wore Mexican attire or indigenous attire every time. You know why? It's a statement for my community. We made it. And people need to see it to believe it. The real art in social justice starts with yourself. Thank you to the staff of EOPS who provided those tools and also to your family. Sometimes, you know, everybody we work with is also part of our family and we're all here to teach each other lessons, spiritual lessons so we can grow and change and to be patient with one another and really defining the, the word of, of love. I don't think we know what love is. I don't ask the creator, why, why me? I ask, what do you want me to do? And I'll tell you why. When I was 14, my mother was killed. I had a sister that committed suicide. I adopted one sister and raised two others. I've eaten out of garbage cans. I've been shot at. I've been jumped. I come from poverty. I used to think that these experiences I had in life were so difficult. More recently, in the last three and a half years, I have almost died three times. The first time, I had a gun pulled out on me and was almost carjacked. The second time, 
I traveled to another country and came back deathly ill with meningitis and spent over three weeks in the hospital. I refused a specific procedure and the doctor said to me, if you don't do this procedure, you will die. My third incident was more recently, a year ago. I was in an airplane accident where a lady was sucked out a window and died. All these experiences have changed my view of life. And what somebody else thinks of me does not matter anymore. Why? Because God lives in me and through you. What matters to me today is what am I doing for my 11 grandkids that are standing before me? Or my four children? Years ago, they, were, they would get offended because I would talk about death. And I said, I'm sorry, but my mom was 35 years old and left 11 kids orphan. So to me, we got to talk about it. So now, they know I have funeral papers. They know where all my legal papers are. But I came back with a vengeance after this last time. You see, no matter what you think from this day forth, life to me is about divine social justice. And I wrote divine social justice in my dissertation. And I reflect back and think, what were you thinking? But it's there. So my ancestors and my spirit guides had it within me. I earned a doctorate in this physical society. But more recently, in this last year of ceremony and healing for me, I've done so many modalities to honor my ancestors, to heal myself, not only therapy, Reiki, massage, aura clearing, energy clearing, sweat lodge, teepee ceremony. Every ceremony I was invited to, I went. I earned my wings. <laughs> On a deeper level, to change the world, you have to change yourself. It starts here and today. You must move forward. Today is a triumph for you because you are alive and have a great purpose. Education has been the platform for liberation, and we all know this, always. When you do that, when you seek your dreams, you're honoring your ancestors. You are them, and they are you. Social justice has a deeper meaning that requires us to dig deep. We must look inside, not just outside. Because you can help somebody today, but who's going to help you tomorrow? We have to transition into the next level of our life. I see myself in a different light, in a different portal, in a different understanding. In this portal is where Nepantla is. When you are in a constant conflict, we see it as a sacred space where you have the new opportunity to make change. And in that space, there is the announcement of endings. So something for me ended in those experiences where I thought I was going to die and I have made some changes. And I am honored to be here, to be in the front for my legacy, for my children, and for my grandchildren. Don't be afraid and continue on this journey. Fulfill your dreams and transform yourself. And know that you are all part of God's majestic plan. But we must hold our integrity, trust, and respect for all humanity. We all have gifts. They're just different. And we need to honor them. Know your limits and be intentional in everything you know that you are a role model to someone and you don't even know they are watching you. You hold the key and power to transform yourself by speaking your truth, 
reflect on your actions, and acknowledge your own growth. Negotiate your options to take care of your spirit. Move forward when a door closes, know that new opportunities are in front of you. Just have to be, you just have to be open. Know that you are resilient and recognize your own strengths to accomplish your dreams and fulfill the creator's plan. You have a life purpose. Somewhere in your community, you are somebody. And it is important that we shift. If we don't shift, people might say, this is a small group of people. That's all it takes, a small group of us to want to change. No matter what happens in your life, there is a greater purpose for you. The storms pass, but you have to learn to dance in the storm. Pay attention to the signs of life and don't apologize for being on your life path. You can triumph, live through your transitions in order to transform yourself. Continue to be the light, your truth. Stay on your path and remember, always remember your story and your ancestors. So claim it. It's always important to listen with your heart and know that life is a gift, that you are part of the divine social justice. I wanna say congratulations to all the graduates and all those who helped the graduates reach their dreams. I leave you with this quote that I wrote. Success begins with your desire to change. Dare yourself to elevate your dreams and transform your life to honor your ancestors in La Quiche on my relations. Thank you. I'm not a crybaby, and yet her story is so powerful that it, you know, I had to fight back the tears. Wow. You think you know somebody, right? You think you know somebody, and then you don't. Amazing. So I wrote down some things in between holding my tears back. Hash, um, so let me just say this to you. You are a giant, and you are a gift. And I, I you know, I, when your name came up, what a great choice. What a great choice for, a, for our, our keynote speaker today. You brought in so much uh, between culture, language, experience, love, uh, difficulty, trauma, and triumph. So I wrote down some stuff, Lilia. Um, hashtag ancestors, hashtag DNA, hashtag ceremony, hashtag honor, hashtag identity, hashtag self-love, hashtag brotherly love, hashtag divine social justice. Thank you. Now, we're gonna transition. We have some more incredible stories to hear, and those are the stories of our students. Um, I'd like to invite up um, our EOPS student, Leosha Nelson, to share your words as an honored student speaker. Please join me in welcoming Leosha Nelson. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Leosha Nelson. I am one of the many college graduates on today. Um, so when I pretty much got to college, I had, I was really excited, but I was full of a lot of self-doubt because I was, um, I was the first one in my family to go to college. I was a foster youth and, um, I was a single mother. And so I was excited and I just bumped my head a lot and I made a lot of mistakes. Um, I just got in head over my I was just doing a lot, you know? I was mainly excited to feel like I'm giving it a try um, when I feel like nobody else did. Um, and I just made a lot of mistakes. Um, when I started having to drop my classes, I really just like beat myself up about it and feeling like, you know, it's something wrong with me. You know, like it's meant for me to not go further with this. Um, my social worker used to um, tell me I can go to EOPS and get resources and stuff like that. But I felt like since I kind of got to college by myself, I'm gonna have to get through college by myself. So I avoided it for a long time. By like two and a half years into college of like going back and forth, 
I just felt like I had nothing else to lose, so I just went ahead and got involved in a program. It was really a blessing to get involved in a program because I felt like I wasn't so stagnant no more. Like I was really able to get through college. Um, they was able to help me map out like my exact classes to get what I really wanted. Like I wasn't just going in circles. And so overall, I just felt like it was a really good program. They just like helped me, like they helped me. They talked with me, they just helped me pick good classes. You know that they picked me up even when it was trial and error of me still making mistakes and stuff like that. Um, but through it all, I just really appreciate the program. Um, I don't know, it's just funny because it's like I really was like suffering by myself for no reason until I got into the program. And so I just want to appreciate myself for giving it a try and sticking it out. Um, I appreciate my daughter and I appreciate all of the graduates here today. If we made it this far, it's nothing we can't do. And um, again, my name is Leosha. I am a college graduate with my AA in social science, AAT in psychology. I, I think I got a theme going on here today. So Leosha Nelson, thank you. I got hashtags for you too. <laughs> Yours is hashtag appreciation and ha hashtag opportunity. Um, I'd like to invite up a wonderful both student worker and student, uh, uh, the beautiful Dominique Wilson. Please join us. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. How, are, how is everybody today? Good. Good. It's such a pleasure to be here to attend this year's 2019 Laney College EOPS Awards Lunching. It is so wonderful to see all these amazing faces here to celebrate our academic accomplishments and achievements. Congratulations, class of 2019. I am extremely honored to be here today and to receive the EOPS Merit Award. I am truly grateful for this recognition and to be a speaker today. I am a full-time graduating student this spring with Associates of Arts degree in business. I will be transferring to a university this fall to pursue my bachelor's degree in business. I am a single mother who has been a full-time student every semester since my journey here at Laney. I must say that my journey was not easy. I faced many challenges, which have all strengthened me to become the person I am today, strong, humble, and dedicated. I am a true testimony that anything and everything is possible. I have been fully committed and devoted to accomplishing my academic goals, and my grades reflect my accomplishments. I am thankful to be in this position of earning the opportunity to transfer from a community college to a four-year university. Despite any financial and personal hardships I faced, I've been determined to build a better future for myself and my child. It's been my obligation to pursue and persevere in my education because I've learned the true value of higher education. I have earned above average grades with a cumulative GPA over 3.5. I've been put on academic, thank you. I've been put on academic honor roll consecutively and as a member of the Phi Theta Kappa Honor Society because of my academic accomplishments. Thank you. One of the most accomplishing semesters for me here was being enrolled in 18.5 units and earning a 4.0 GPA while being a single full-time mother. <laughs> college, coming to college was my own decision and I'm happy with the choice I've made. I would like to say thank you to my family who is my support system. And with the support of my family, I was able to reach each academic goal that I set for myself thus far. I would like to give a very special thanks to my mother, who is an amazing and phenomenal woman. She is a true definition of a mother, grandmother, and friend. And without her, none of this would be possible. My child, who because of her, 
I stand here today more than ever, giving myself the strength and courage to strive to be the best mother that I can be. I would like to thank, I would like to give my thanks and gratitude to the ELPS program, my counselor, Ms. Laura, staff assistants, Benet, Danielle, and program coordinator, Mai Lee. Without the program success, college uh, would have been much harder to achieve. I have always experienced exceptional services through the EOPS program, and I've always stayed compliant with the program. The EOPS program provides endless services and opportunities to help students succeed and continue their academic goals. With the assistance of book vouchers, vocational grants, assistance with one-on-one -on -one peer advisors, assigned counselor, the program is by far one of the best programs on campus. They also offer extended services through their programs of financial literacy, nutrition, housing, employment, and campus tours. They do a great job of coordinating these resources for us students. I myself utilize all the resources offered by the EOPS that have enhanced my knowledge and well-being. I would like to give a special thanks to my counselor, Ms. Lawyer, Ms. Laura, excuse me, who is brilliant. Without her knowledge, guidance, and compassion for me to succeed, none of this would be possible. And because of her, I am transferring. She saw my potential, my talent, and my sacrifices, such that I am standing here today talking to you about it. She is a true definition of a counselor, supportive, caring, and knowledgeable. I feel so blessed to have her as my counselor and a part of my support system. <sighs> Lastly, <clears throat> excuse me. I would like to, I, I have had the privilege to work in the EOPS, CalWORKs, and Next Step in Care program. This opportunity has allowed me to gain more knowledge, skills, and experience. I would like to thank all the staff a part of these programs. I became a part of a great team. Working with a lot of staff, I would like to give a special thanks to Benet. <laughs> I gained invaluable knowledge all while having the opportunity to work with a diverse and ethnic population of people. I will truly miss this department, the atmosphere and helping students, which is what I love most. In closing, I want to tell each and one of you present here today is to never give up, even if you're convinced that it's all over. Let's take what we earned and put it to use to build a brighter future. Best wishes to you all, thank you. So Dominique, you have some hashtags too. Your hashtags are hashtag persevere and hashtag achievement. Okay. Now, our next student speaker is not here today. However, uh, Irina, you wanted to say a couple of words to acknowledge her, right? Please come on up. And uh, while Mitzi is not here, she's going to have some hashtags too. So if you know her, take them back to her. Come on, come on up, Irina. Thank you. So Misty, Misty is not here, right? So I just wanted to say a little bit about Misty. Um, she, unfortunately, I know she has a very heavy class load, and she had tried. She was planning to try to make it here, but she didn't make it at this time. But I just wanted to say that she personifies the spirit of nevertheless we persist. She has been through so much, and I won't go, you know, um, I won't talk about that. But I just wanted to mention that she has. She, she um, has earned an associate's degree for transfer. This semester, she's earning an associate's degree for transfer in psychology. And she completed 26 units in the fall semester, successfully, with good grades, in order to transfer in time, while also simultaneously volunteering in the Family Justice Center and other places in the community and doing educational outreach. So um, I just want to honor Misty Harrelson, and um, thank you so much. Misty's hashtags are hashtag persist, hashtag graduate, hashtag determination. I'd like to, at this time, welcome up uh, our counselors for the acknowledgement of the counselors. Please join me, um, Laura, Sandra, Irina, and Carolyn. So what's going to happen is our counselors are going to say, share their thoughts with you about being able to be your counselors throughout your academic journey and acknowledge you. In addition to that, 
Um, there's going to be the presentation of the graduates and, and uh, uh, transfer students. So they're going to stay here and transition to the next place where you're going to get your hood. So at graduation when we see you, and I see many students, I see some students here from last night's banquet. So with your sashes from last night, you also can wear this sash as well with your graduation attire acknowledging that you are EOPS CARE Next Up and CalWORKS student. This is just an amazing celebration, and I am so honored to be the counselor with the Next Up program for EOPS. I would just like to uh, mention how fortunate I am to work with such an incredible team of people um, from the support staff, the administrative staff, the FECA is my, my rock, and of course our uh, community partners with BE, Shanina and Faith. And Dr. Lewis, yeah. Dr. Chavez, you, you knew exactly what I needed to hear today. I think you knew what we all needed to hear. And truly, you were obedient in your presentation of your legacy, the legacy of your ancestors and those who have gone before us, and too often we forget about them. Several years ago, the Lord placed in my heart to acknowledge and honor and keep the legacy of my mother alive. She was an incredible woman of faith. She believed in the power of prayer and intercession and standing in the gap for people, not just for her family, but for her community and for future generations. And I believe that mommy stood in the gap for all of you here today at some point. The scholarship award was established to honor the students that I have been blessed to serve at Laney College. And when I say blessed, that's an understatement. So today, we continue her legacy by honoring our four Next Up graduates with the scholarship award of $400. And I would like for our graduates who are present to please join me quickly on the stage to receive your award. Leosha Nelson. <laughs> Christina Perry. Heather Huddleston, and Sonny Vett, who is not present today, but has already received his blessing, and we have sung his praises at our Tuesday workshop. Thank you all for helping to continue the legacy of my mother. God bless you. Welcome and congratulations to the class of 2019. Um, I just want to take this opportunity to say thank you. Thank you for allowing us to be part of your journey. We are extremely proud of you, and I hope that you begin the next chapter of your life with the same enthusiasm and positive attitude that you exhibit here today, and know that every step of the way you're being guided and everything you'll ever need will come to you in due time. Thank you and congratulations. Does anybody know me? <laughs> I'm still getting to know myself, okay? I'm Sandra McGee, and I've worked with EOPS for a long time. And I'm honored to be a part of the EOPS program because I feel like it's one of the greatest things that the community colleges has ever developed. When I was a student many years ago, I went to Merritt. How many remember that Merritt used to be down on MLK? No? <laughs> that was a while ago. <laughs> and uh, I transferred from there to Cal. And it was just uh, quite an experience. And I feel like because of EOP, at Cal, they only call it EOP. They don't have the S. <laughs> but because of this program, 
don't you think it's wonderful that we even have the community colleges? That and then on top of that we have you? I mean, you can be any age and wake up one day and say, I think I'll go to college and get that degree, right? And you can go to a community college. So I say long live the community colleges and long live EOPS, okay? And I just want to congratulate you all for walking in our footsteps, okay? And for uh, achieving your degree and for um, whatever else you're about to do. If you're gonna transfer, fantastic. If you're gonna take a break and uh, raise the kids, <laughs> whatever you're gonna do, just do a good job and just remember that we're always here for you. Thank you. Thank you so much. So I'm Irina Rifkin, um, Lady College EOPS counselor. I just want to say that it is the greatest honor in the world to work with yourselves, with uh, Lady College EOPS and CalWORK students. And I am inspired time and time again by your resilience, by your strength, and also by all of your accomplishments. So I just, first of all, I want um, everybody to give you a hand and give yourself a hand. And I also want to say that it's been an honor to work with all the staff and uh, faculty administrators and also the student workers. And I just want to actually honor the student workers again, if student workers can please rise, because you, uh, you are a core part of the EOPS services. And us counselors, we depend on you. And we actually can't do our work without you. So I just want to honor all the student workers, especially. So uh, we're, gonna, um, um, we're going to actually go ahead and have all the graduates to line up. Um, and I just wanted to mention that I'm not going to be on the stage during this process because of perfume allergies, but I will be in spirit. I'll be cheering on you from the fragrance-free table. Um, and, um, but I'd like for everybody to please line up um, over there near this, uh, these stairs. And what I'd like you to do is to, as you come across the stage, to, I think there's a microphone over there as well, to please uh, share your name and your accomplishments. So for example, the degree, the certificate, the transfer, um, and, um, and then uh, so all of us can honor you. And congratulations again, graduates. Thank you.